Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to show you how to design a custom music player inside Create Studio 3 so you can have it play back in your videos. And the cool thing about this is that once you've designed it, you can simply save it into your scenes and use it in multiple projects. And before we dive deeper into this, let me show you what it looks like in the playback and then come back, start creating. <laughs> the example now let's start and diving into creating and this is going to be so easy to create because you can find all of those shapes uh, from the media folder and then you can go into the svg api and use the search bar to search for all the icons i'll leave all those names in the description below so you can easily find all of those icons and design your own music player and so i'm going to show you how to design it and animate it so that it looks more engaging and interesting to the viewers while watching your videos. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this text and then I'm going to use this one as a reference. So I'm not going to delete it, but I'll just keep it on the left side of my uh, canvas right here, just as a reference as I create my uh, design. And so here's how we start. So the first thing we need to do is we grab a rectangle shape. So I'm going to hit the shift key and the letter R to grab a rectangle. And then I'm going to resize it like this right here and I want to turn it into a rounded corner so to do that you have four dots around the, co the corners you can easily drag them like this and turn this into a rounded corner like that and then from there you can change the color so feel free to color this the way you want I'm going to open up the color settings and then I'm going to choose one of my uh, favorites right here just for now and then I'm going to adjust the position of the color by moving the handle or dragging the handles uh, sideways and make it diagonal just like this and uh, then the next thing you want to do is i'm going to grab a square shift key and the letter s to grab a square then i'm going to resize it i'm going to turn this into more rounded corners as well like this and then i'm going to resize it to make it smaller and then i can easily just uh, make it uh, towards the top center of my background shape right here then i'm going to change the color of this one and make it gray so let's just actually do gradient so we can make the first color light gray select the second color then make this a little bit dark gray then we can also go with a diagonal uh, type color like this so that it looks more interesting and then the next thing i want to do is i'm going to grab a text i'm going to hit the uh, shift key with the letter t to grab a text this would be the, mu the music name or the music track name that you can have underneath the uh, square right here and then um, we will need to make a duplicate of the background or the gradient color that I created right there. So I'm going to need to make a duplicate of that guy by hitting the control D to make a duplicate. Then I'm going to rename this guy and call this uh, music player mask because that will be used as our mask later. And then I'm going to extend everything in the timeline for about um, 18 seconds just for now. And then, you know, it's really up to you how long do you want to keep that in your videos. So once you've done that, next next thing we want to do is we want to grab another re rounded rectangle that we are going to grab and make it as a vertical line. So we're going to hit the shift key along with the letter R to make this uh, to grab a rectangle. And then we're going to turn it into a fully rounded corners like this. And then I'm going to adjust its size like that and I'm gonna make it a vertical line that I can simply just drag it right here and make sure it is also uh, centered. I'm gonna adjust its size right there like this. And let's make it a little bit longer right here and then make sure it is centered and lined up. And then once you've done that, you can change this color to white right here. We might wanna make it a little thinner like this. Yep. And then the next thing we want to do is we grab the icons. Again, the icons can be uh, found under the svgapi.com where you can go onto your media folder, click on the SVG uh, icon, and then use the search bar to search for all the music icons. And I'll leave those names again in the, instruct in the description below so you can easily find them and then go from there. Next, we want to grab the music icon right here, and then we're going to uh, change its size and make it smaller. 
and we can grab it and center it on our square right here like this and then change this color to white right there and then i want to select the music icon along with the square and i'm going to group these guys i'm going to hit the control and the letter g to group them up then i'm going to right click and then call this music uh track so let's just or music uh music track name music track name right here all right and then um we are going to grab the rest of the icons so the first thing i'm going to do is i'll grab the uh, i'll actually need to create that uh, icon these were basically uh, vertical lines along with the music icon so i'm going to do that by hitting the shift key and the letter r or maybe i can make a duplicate of this guy again right here just to save my time and then i can adjust its uh, size like this and then i can just grab it underneath and then keep adjusting its size to make it really short like that and keep doing that. I mean, obviously, you're going to need to make it thinner like this. All right, let's take a look. There you go. All right, so we're going to have to place it above the vertical line right here. So keep moving. We can hold the shift key and play with the arrows that will move elements on your canvas uh, 10 pixels at a time. All right, and then you can keep designing from, from there. So let's just grab this guy right here. And then I'm going to need to make a duplicate of that guy. Then I'm going to drag it and make sure it goes underneath it. Then we can drag it and make it uh, shorter like this. And we can make a duplicate again. And then we can just drag this guy right here. Make a duplicate again. So we, we're going to have three of those guys right there, right here. And then the next thing we want to do is we're going to grab the uh, music icon again. Then we're going to resize it right here. And then we're going to place it right there, right underneath those guys like this. So it's going to be something like that. And then obviously change the color from blue to white. Then we can extend this one also in the timeline, make sure it is lined up just like that. And you can make this bigger or taller. So you can easily do this by right clicking the uh, background and then lock it up just for now. So you can, you know, drag stuff in the timeline and easily adjust the, their uh, position and size and everything. So now I can select all of these guys and then I can resize them and make them a little bit bigger like this. And then I can position them wherever I want. Once you've done that, the next thing we wanna do is grab the heart icon right there. And then we're going to grab it and then position it right there. And then make sure it is also you know around the same size. And we're gonna need to make it uh, sm uh, smaller. And then we change its color to uh, white right here so we're going to change the color back to white right there uh text still seems to be pretty big so this is you know how it really uh goes that you have to keep like trying until you fine tune your design and then once you're happy and completely completely designed it you can easily just save this stuff into your scenes and be able to reuse that in your uh projects so let's just continue to edit our design and so i've got my heart icon the next thing i want to do is grab the plus sign so I'm going to drag that and drop it right there, change this color to white. Then I'm going to resize it and make it small. Then I'm going to grab it on the right side right here, right there. Make sure it is lined up and we are good to go. The next thing we, is going to be grabbing the shuffle icon right here and change this color to white. Then I'm simply going to adjust the size of it also. All right. So just about the same size of the one that we have in our existing design and then go back and then place it right underneath the lines right here. And then we are going to grab the backward and the forward button or icon. So we can just drag and drop these guys, change the color again to white. And then we're going to resize this one right here. And then we're gonna drag it. So this is gonna be our forward uh, button that we're gonna place on the design right here. And then I can make a duplicate of that guy, drag it to the left side right here. Then I can uh, flip this one how I can go to settings on the right panel, find where it says properties, click that. And then where it says flip, I'm going to flip it horizontally. Now we have a flips. So this will be a backward button. The next thing to do is uh, grab the uh, repeat icon. So we're going to grab that right here, change the color again to white. Then we're going to resize this one and then just grab it and position it right next to the guys over here, right there. And then finally grab our uh, pause button. So the pause button is something that I created using the uh, rectangle shape. So all I did was I hit the shift key and a letter R 
to grab a rectangle. Then I simply just made this fully around it like this. And then I changed the size of that guy like that. And then I, uh, and then I turned it or uh, rotated it to be a vertical line like this. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to adjust the size like that. And this is going to be our pause button. So the pause button simulates that the music is actually playing, right? Instead of using the play button. So this would be more engaging. And then we could just position it right here. Make sure it is kind of like centered right there and change the color to white. Then we can go back and uh, make a duplicate of that guy and then drag it right next to the uh, other one right here. And we might want to keep a little bit of distance between the buttons. So the, I'm going to drag this one a little bit to the right. And then now we have completed designing our music player. These guys can be smaller. Again, I haven't done it exactly as it shows on this one. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but I want you to take your time while designing this and um, make sure that everything is lined up and are in the right size as well. And then once you've completed designing this, this is uh, the time where you want to start creating your animation, right? So how you can do this, uh, that, that will be the next part of the tutorial. So let me just go ahead and remove this guy and then I show you how you can animate this and make it more dynamic. But before we make sure we create our animation, we need to grab all the layers that are not lined up in the timeline drag them all the way to make sure that these guys are lined up or perfectly lined up just like that right here. And then now we can select all the designs. Actually, we need to unlock the layers that were locked in the timeline. So we're going to go ahead and right click and unlock and then unlock this one as well. Then I'm simply going to highlight all the design right here. Make sure that I get this onto the center of my canvas like that. And then now it is time for me to create my animation. And again, we want to make sure that we have a layer that we're going to use as our mask, which is going to be um, a duplicate of our background right here. So here's what we need to do. Once we've got that covered, we need to create an animation for this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have one right here. So we need and then we need to make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to make a duplicate and then that guy is going to be on the right side, but outside the music player right here. And then I will uh, adjust its size. So I'm um, actually I'm going to keep the size as is just for now. Then our next step is to create our animation. So now I'm going to select the first one on the music player right here, and then I'm going to create my animation. So all I'm going to do is I will uh, click on add animation above the timeline, and then I'll choose position and scale. And then I'm going to grab the shape and then hold the shift key to drag my shape to the left side outside my player right here. And I'm going to make it smaller. And so it doesn't need to be really far or so small. So just a little bit smaller, uh, but also outside and pretty close to the player, but just outside, outside of it like that. Next, we want to uh, uh, select our, uh, I'm sorry. So we're going to click on the first keyframe, make sure that this guy goes back again uh, right here. So this was my mistake. I'm sorry. We're going to make it bigger again, just right here. That will be the starting point right there. And then once we click on the second keyframe, then it should just go outside and then it should be smaller in size, a little bit smaller like this, but also uh, pretty close to the player and still outside. Now we're just going to go back again to where our, our first keyframe is at. Then I'm going to select my second design and then I need to create an animation for this one. So I'm going to click on add animation. I'll use position and scale. Then I'm going to select my uh, second keyframe, first keyframe uh, actually, and then make this guy uh, smaller like this. And I'm going to drag it and, and get it closer to the uh, design right here. Then I'm going to select my second keyframe and drag this one and grab it inside my design just like that. So when I go back and then press play, this is how it's going to look like. Next, we want to create um, uh, an exit animation for this guy. So what we're going to do is we will move our playhead forward in time. So again, that dependent is dependent on how long do you want to keep that on screen. So you might want to time up things with your keyframes exactly how you want, but I'm just going to show you how to do it in the, in the tutorial. And then it's up to you how you want to time these up in your videos. So I'm going to have my playhead at two seconds. Then I'm going to create another animation, which is going to be the exit animation for this guy. So when I click on add animation and then we'll choose position, uh, and scale and easing is going to be as is. Next, we will select our second keyframe and then we're going to make this guy go uh, 
to the to outside like this and then adjust the size make it the same size of the previous design just like that right here so when i go back press play here you go and then that one will just exit right there once we've created this we can easily duplicate so instead of just creating multiples of these guys and create animations using keyframes it's easier just to duplicate this once you've designed it and then you can easily uh, make adjustments so now let's just go back right here and make sure that once this is about to go out like that so i'm going to select both designs which is going to be uh this one along with that guy right here let's just go back right there hold on a second there you go and then that will be exiting all right so that guy we're going to make a duplicate of it like i said so we're going to make a duplicate and then this one we will just grab it and make it start uh after the first one is finished right here let's take a look right there once that is there this is the time where we want to show up the next one right here right so now we can make another duplicate of this guy and then we're going to grab our playhead to make it at the uh, um, first keyframe of the second animation which or the exit animation then i'm going to make another duplicate then i can just drag this and make it start exactly at that point then i can go back and then press play and this is how it's going to look like just like that right and then it's going to keep playing like that now once you've duplicated this again you can do this for as many times as you want it's really up to you but once you've done that uh, you want to make sure that all the layers are lined up in the timeline just like this and then now you want to select all these groups so all the ones that we created including the um, animations and keyframes that we created and then we're going to right click and then group these guys all together the next thing we want to do right click and rename and let's call this uh music track name for example right and then now it is time to start using the mask so what we're going to do is uh as once we have this selected we're going to go to the right panel and find the properties tab click that and then we will use the mask but apply track mat to it so we're going to find under uh, under the properties where it says track mat we're going to open that up to see the small panel and then we're going to open the drop down menu and then find the layer that we created which is going to be music player mask so we just need to find it right there and then i'm going to change the type from luma to alpha right here and let's go back and have a play and this is how it's going to look like so um i, I did this it, it, it also happened to me you know when i was uh, adjusting um i creating my i was creating my mask that this is what was happening the music was being cut at that point so what you want to do is uh, when that once you apply the mask you simply just want to click on the op open group button to open that group all right and then you want to zo zoom out of your canvas then from the right panel you can uh, find where it says boundary and then you want to click on edit manually then you can simply just move forward or advance your playhead until you see this one is uh, on the left side like that and simply adjust the canvas size like this make sure it is lined up like that and then when you're done you can go back on the right panel and then click on finish editing then you can go back to the main timeline right here and then now it should be okay uh, let's have a look so we just need to make sure that this guy is uh, centered right here position this on the center and then once we play it this is how it's going to look like so this is how easily you can create a music player inside create studio 3 and how you can create animations and make it more engaging instead of using static images that's how you can bring your elements or animations to life by creating motions to engage with your audience and captivate your viewers i hope you found this helpful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one Me